Good morning from a busy Berlin street. Today, making a stop at a building or a complex known as the Bendler Block. And this all revolves around an attempt to kill one Adolf Hitler in July of 1944. That attempt essentially grew up in the complex that we will see in the video. So a little background on the history of the resistance, the German resistance to Hitler and his government. Most of the members of the different resistance groups that existed in Germany were, um, they were sort of founded and operating on this concept of um, backward looking to an earlier Germany that tended to be more, um, let's say, aristocratic and such. A lot of the members of the resistance groups that existed were, had arist aristocratic backgrounds and especially backgrounds in the German military, the German army, which is historically where the officers of the German military would have come from. They, for the most part at that time, would have all originated in this sort of aristocratic class where they would have the little word von or V-O-N as part of their last name. So if you ever wondered why some German last names have that von or von in the middle, <laughs> it's kind of a sign of an aristocratic background and oftentimes a um, family history of serving in the German army. So the Bendler block should be right around the corner up here. And as I mentioned, it's the complex or the building where the most serious attempt on Hitler's life was formed and based out of. And you've probably seen a movie or two that sort of tells this story of how in July of 1944, when Klaus von Stauffenberg, who was working in the Bendler block, or that was where he was uh, based, made an attempt to essentially blow up one Adolf Hitler. So let's turn the corner here. We'll wait for a pedestrian. And one thing you may notice is that today, hopefully you can see there this street where the Bendler block is located and which is still used today by the German military, but this street now named Stauffenbergstrasse. So we're going to venture right down. Maybe you can see those buses and on the left hand side, there is a courtyard which is portrayed in various movies, you may have seen the movie Valkyrie, Tom Cruise movie where he plays Stauffenberg. And as part of that movie, they did use that courtyard for the very dramatic scene in which Stauffenberg and his fellow plotters were executed by essentially firing squad. So we will see the spot where that really happened in that courtyard. Overseeing the area where Stauffenberg and several of his uh, co-plotters worked was a general by the name of Friedrich Fromm. And Fromm was, um, he was kind of trying to play things on both sides. He wasn't quite sure if this attempt on Hitler's life would end up succeeding or not. And he seemed to some extent to kind of sympathize with the plotters who worked in his uh, under his charge, you might say, but he resisted really outwardly becoming a full-fledged member of the plot and kind of like wanted to see which way is the wind gonna ultimately blow on all of this before he would commit to one side or the other. So from because of his kind of um, sitting on the fence approach to all of this, ended up getting himself into a lot of trouble because when this plot ultimately failed, it seemed to have been a success, but ultimately when it was uh, 
apparent that the plot against Hitler had failed, Fromm now finds himself in a very bad position because he's not only, you know, not committed to the plot, but he hasn't done anything to stop it from brewing in his own command. And so he says to himself, man, I got to get a hold of these plotters and I've got to get rid of them before they can start talking about how I was sort of, I knew about this and that kind of thing. And so as soon as it becomes, becomes evident that the plot is not going to succeed, General Fromm rounded up um, four of the plotters here in the courtyard of the Bendler block where they all worked. And he had them executed where you see that wreath on the wall over there. So let's walk over and get a better look. This is now a museum, and it's a place where each year the German military holds a kind of a special, um, a special honoring ceremony for those who made that attempt in July of 1944. And here's the plaque. Here starben for Deutschland. So. Here died for Germany, and there are five names on there. The top name is General Ludwig Beck, who was a pre-World War II general, and um, essentially he was retired due to his long-standing and ongoing dislike for Hitler and his regime. You can see Friedrich Olbricht. He was a general who unfortunately failed to act quickly enough. When the bomb went off, he failed to immediately set the um, takeover of the German government. You can see Klaus von Stauffenberg. One of the plotters was Merz von Quernheim and Werner von Heften was Stauffenberg's assistant. And so, um, as you've seen perhaps in the movie Valkyrie, that's where the dramatic execution in real life took place in this Bendler block courtyard and Stauffenberg's final words were, long live Germany. So now, let's go to the spot, the very place where the bodies of those executed here were initially brought and disposed of. As I mentioned at the start of the video, many of the members of these resistance groups who were trying to essentially bring down Hitler's government and who existed sort of underground, Many of them came from that upper crust part of German society and Hitler and his movement had always been too populist for them. They were never really on board with Nazism. Um, they tended to view the masses as not an appropriate um, group of people to be essentially determining the course of events in their country and believed themselves to be much more qualified as the sort of well-bred, old money, highly educated members of society. And so there were many Vons in the names of the members of these resistance groups. Here's just an example of a Von sort of tomb there, the von Falkenhain family. And so these Von families, sometimes called Junkers, they, um, yeah, they were just never really on board with Hitler and this mass movement and especially as World War II really went south for Germany, these German army officer, this German army officer corps who really sort of was born of these upper crust families, they realized that not only is Germany going to lose this war, but if it doesn't stop soon, that the country of Germany itself would just be absolutely physically and psychologically devastated and destroyed. And so they knew they had to act and act quickly if they were going to salvage anything of their country as it was now surrounded on all sides by these massive armies, the Soviets, the Americans, the British. And so it was, as we mentioned in July of 1944, that they made their attempt to not only kill Hitler, but to take control of the German government, an attempt that nearly succeeded but in the end failed. And so while we have these places which honor the five people who were killed 
in the Bendler Block courtyard, there were many, many other members of this plot to take over the German government and many of those people, German army officers who were found out in the days, weeks and months following this attempt on Hitler's life. And so here we have the location where the five who were executed immediately in the Bendler Block courtyard, where their bodies were unceremoniously deposited immediately following that failed attempt to take control of the German government. Their bodies were very soon thereafter removed from this location by order of the highest Nazi officials so as not to leave any physical location where, which could be associated with this group of five who had attempted to essentially remove Hitler from power and take control of the German government. So that is essentially the story of what happened at the Bendler Block and this perhaps more out of the way location here in a cemetery not far away.